This is the very last video for AP Statistics, so congratulations for making it this far. This video will talk about chapter 27 and will talk about inferences, meaning hypothesis tests and confidence intervals for regression, meaning scatter plots and lines of best fit. Okay? We'll talk about assumptions and conditions, and we'll talk about some hypothesis tests and confidence intervals for the slope and for the intercept. So here's an example from the textbook. Measuring body fat can be tedious and expensive, and we want to estimate an individual's body fat based on their height, weight, or waist size. So we focus on the waist size, and here's a scatter plot of percent body fat plotted against waist size for a sample of 250 males of various ages. Okay, and so here you see the scatter plot and the line of best fit and the equation for the line of best fit. Okay, this is all stuff that we did in our previous unit. Okay, the problem is, is that this line of best fit is based entirely on this sample of 250 um, males of various ages. What we want to have is the line of best fit for the entire population. Okay, so um, the line of best fit for the entire population will look something like this, okay, where beta sub zero is the um, y intercept for the line of best fit for the population, and beta sub one is um, the slope for um, the line of best fit for the population. Okay. Now, the one thing the book points out is that this mu sub y, the reason it's not y is that for any given x value, um, the y will actually be a distribution of y's, not just a single value. Now, for the assumptions and conditions needed to do regression, there's quite a lot, but there's two that are really important. Okay. They are the straight enough condition, the scatter plot should look straight, and if you're not sure, you should check the residual plot. And if it's not straight, you should straighten the scatter plot using, you know, um, square roots or logs or whatever you need to do to straighten the scatter plot. The second condition, or assumption, I should say, is the quantitative data assumption. Both variables need to be quantitative. The next one is the independence assumption. The data needs to be collected independent of each other. Okay, one of the important ones is the randomization condition. In order for us to generalize this to some larger population, the individuals must be representative um, of that population. Okay, the equal variance condition is an important one where the spread of the points around the line of best fit is consistent throughout the graph. Okay, if not, we'll need to re-express the scatter plot. Okay, the last and very important one is the nearly normal condition. Okay, the residuals need to be nearly normal. Okay, this can be checked with a histogram or a normal probability plot. So the residuals take on an important role. The residual is the difference between the observed Y value and the Y value predicted by the generalized regression equation. Okay, and we can look at the residuals and a distribution of the residuals and it should look normal. Now, a very important question we can ask about this line of best fit for the population is could the slope be zero? Okay, that's an important question because if the slope could be zero, then there would be no association between the x variable and the y variable. It doesn't matter what x is, y is always going to be about the same thing. Okay, and that means the x and the y values would be independent. Okay, that's an important question for us to ask. Okay, so after a lot of um, math that the textbook goes through, here's the summary for the sampling distribution for regression slopes. Okay, here is our test statistic, the t-score value. Um, this one comes from the sample. This is the hypothesized um, slope. And the standard of error comes from this equation down here. And the standard error, the S sub E, comes from this equation there. Okay, so there's quite a bit of math that is done there. 
Now, luckily for us, we don't have to do a lot of it by hand. So um, the hypothesis test for the slope, we are almost always testing this um, hypothesis test and alternative hypothesis. Could the slope for the um, line of best fit for the population be zero or not? Okay, and we could use the equations given to us, uh, but usually this is given to us in the tab table. Uh, before I said, forget about this part of the table, here is where we use it. Okay, so for this, this again, this line right here is for the slope. Here is the slope um, for, here's where we find the slope um, for the points that we have. Here is the standard error calculated uh, based on those points. Here is the t-score value testing, could the slope be zero? And here is the p-value, okay? This p-value is low, and so we would reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the slope would not be zero, okay? Which means that there is an association between the x and the y variables. We can also do confidence intervals for the slope. Okay, using that same data, here is the formula down here that we would use. Uh, B sub 1 is the one that comes from our data. So uh, this is a data set given to us in the textbook about ice, um, about like an ice breakup, um, at what date the ice is going to break up. Um, so we would take this value, negative 0 0.07606, plus or minus the T star value, and that would be based on um, 98 degrees of freedom. And that could be, we'll confine that from our calculator. Sorry, 89 degrees of freedom times the standard error, which is given to us here. So all these numbers are given to us. And we can find a confidence interval that the slope might be in. Okay, again, an important question about that confidence interval is whether or not zero is in that interval. Okay, the last topic is hypothesis tests for the intercept. Now these are less common because oftentimes the intercept is not within um, a, a useful range, um, but we can test the hypothesis to see if the y-intercept could be zero. Okay, and there are formulas that we could use, uh, but this data is almost always given to us. Again, in this part of the data, okay, and this is the p-value testing, could the y-intercept be zero? Okay, again, here, the p-value is low, so we'd reject the null hypothesis and conclude that this, the y-intercept is not zero. So, this video was about inferences, meaning hypothesis tests and confidence intervals for regression. Thank you for watching.